Previously on the bill. You never touched her. Shut up. I just care. That's all. Well, I'd rather you didn't talk about me. I consider myself a victim of police harassment. Brian got a call earlier saying you're dead. What? Can you hear me, sir? What happened? Can anyone tell me what happened? No, I didn't say anything. Can we have an ambulance to Mather King Street on the Coal Lane Estate? We have an elderly male with head injuries. Stand by. One of you lot must have seen something. Just got here, mate. Well, he was already here. Yeah. You're going to be okay, mate. We've called an ambulance. 661 from Sierra Oscar. Ambulance on its way. Oh, <laughs> Thanks. How are you feeling, Miss Merrick? I'm oh, fine. Really? Well, to be honest, I, I, I do feel a bit freaked out about uh, the phone call. I just, I just don't understand how anybody could ring up my ex-boyfriend and tell them to come and identify my body. Well, we need to take this seriously. It may just be a one-off, but... Well, even so, they knew too much, you see. I mean, how did they know that Brian was my ex? How did they have his number? I'll put somebody onto it. Thank you. Who's available? Oh, um, well, there's Roger. He's attached to VPU now. Uh, I could spare him for a couple of hours. Good. Right. Send him to my office. Great. Thanks, sir. Oh, hello. Sleep in, did we, Twinkle Toes? You missed Morel's briefing. Did she notice I wasn't there? Did she miss her star pupil, do you mean? Uh, no. Here. Yeah. Operation Mercury. The super's new drug initiative on the Coal Lane estate. We're to concentrate solely on the top street dealers. Our aim is to collect enough intelligence to get them off the streets and behind bars. Here's ours. Andy Marshall. Street dealer, crack and heroin mainly. Rumoured to supply to a network of small-time user dealers. But to track down his movements, find out who his contacts are, and bump below him on the food chain. And what's your uniform involved in? Just to hand all intelligence towards the CID. Cool, let's go get a result. Uh, easy, Tiger. This is an intelligence gathering operation. I'm not arresting anyone today. No matter how much your reputation might need boosted around here. Well, I'm off your word. OK, Mr. Greenwood, they'll take you to hospital now. We'll make our own way. We'll take a statement there. I don't want to go to the hospital. I told you there's no need for anyone to fuss. And I told you I used to be a nurse, and I know you need to be checked out properly. Thanks. How'd you get on? I just seem to remember much. Most likely the shock. Maybe it's group amnesia. None of these look claim to remember thing either. I haven't seen him about before. Nor me. Do you know him, Laura? No. I can ask around. Yeah. Do that. Did you get anything? Yeah, that little lad there, Evan, he's at school with me youngest. He thinks he saw what happened. Glad someone did. He says a large dark car stopped in the road, dark-skinned man got out, started shouting at the victim, then punched him to the ground. Dark-skinned or black? We couldn't say. What about the car's index? Nothing, but he did say he'd seen Jesus. On the dashboard of the car, small statue of Jesus. Let's start. Come in. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes. You heard about what happened with Diesta Costa's ex yesterday? Oh, some sort of prank call. She's quite shaken up by it. We thought you'd be the best person to investigate. You know, put a stop to it before it becomes even more malicious. See if you can find out who's responsible, will you? Sir? Problem? Uh, no, 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 of course not. But do you think it's... The best use of police resources. One of my officers has been victimised. I want to show her that we take her concerns seriously. Oh, I understand. I didn't mean to sound unconcerned. But is it really that serious? That's what I'm asking you to find out. I've asked Ramani's ex, Brian York, to come and you can start by interviewing him. That'll be all, PC Valentine. Sir. Roger. Wrench. You done it, sir? Don't let this cheerful exterior fool you. Oh, 
Not enjoying your time down at VPU? I've only been tasked to investigate that prank called Ramani's ex. Yeah, so I heard. Well, rather you than me. I mean, if 1471 isn't coming up, Trumps, and the victim doesn't recognise the caller's voice, you could be looking into that for months. Oh, thanks, Reg. You're a great help. I don't understand it. If the man was mugged for his wallet, we could put it down to junkies, but they didn't take a thing. So Nigel says. And then there's the crowd. Someone gets assaulted for no reason, and no one, not even the victim, sees anything. Except for little Evan, of course. Yeah, I forgot about our star witness. You're right, though. We're not being told the full picture. Either they're covering to protect the attacker, or... They're scared of the attacker, and covering to protect themselves. Just back off, man! Take it easy, bro. I don't want any trouble. You've got a job to do, and so do I. There's room for the both of us. What's going on? Oh, nothing's going on, officer. We're just discussing a little business, that's all. I saw you earlier, didn't I? At the scene of the assault. I don't know what you're talking about. A man was attacked earlier on. You drove past the scene. It was you, wasn't it? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, all right. Enough of the bravado. Off you go, the lot of you. Do you always let your girlfriend fight your battles for you? Lance. Did you find out who he is yet? No, not yet. But I know he's speaking to. And the marshal, friendly neighbourhood dealer. Can I take a seat, Brian? Okay, can you run through exactly what happened yesterday for me? Uh, well, as I told Inspector Gold, um, at about seven o'clock yesterday evening, the phone rang. Uh, it was a woman. She said she was from Sun Hill and that D.S. De Costa had been killed in the line of duty. She then asked if I'd like to come down to Sun Hill to identify her body. Did she give you a name or any indication as to who she was? No. She just put the phone down. Well, that's it. Did you think that was a bit odd? A bit cold? I don't know. I suppose. <laughs> I was too shocked. Did you try 1471? No, there's no point. I have a call the display phone. It showed number withheld. What about the voice? Did you recognise that at all? No. But she definitely had a southern accent. Southern accent? Listen, have you given any serious thought as to who might have made this call? <laughs> all of last night. I can't think of anyone. Disgruntled business partners, jilted lovers. I haven't seen anyone since uh, Ramani and I broke up. And how's Ramani been since the breakup? What do you mean? Well, we all know how people can change dramatically once they become an ex. Has she appeared under more pressure than normal? <laughs> Hang on a minute. You're not seriously insinuating that Ramani's got anything to do with this, are you? It's just a line of inquiry. I know Ramani better than anyone, PC Valentine. If she's concerned, I assure you, she's got good reasons to be. And if you've been charged to investigate, you should take it as seriously as she is. Well, what's he doing? Hey? I mean, if he is dealing, then he must have the gear on him, so why don't we just pull him and turn him over? De Amaral doesn't want Marshall spooked. The more intelligence we can obtain before we finally arrest him, the better chance we'll have of building a case the CPS will take seriously. Looks like the first customer of the day. Don't look like drugs, more like money. Well, maybe she's his wholesaler. Well, if she is, it's her unlucky day. I don't believe it. Must be his kids. No kidding, Sherlock. Southern accent. Try so Oaks calling it. What do you think? I might as well start ringing through the phone book and questioning everyone. Oh, I don't sound it. Warm. Warn me? No, no, no. Thanks, Reg. Thanks a lot. Maybe I should ask everyone in CID to stop what they're doing and muck in. That'd go down well, wouldn't it? Put all the rapes, robberies on burglaries on hold while they all joined forces with me to solve the crime of the century. The great prank phone call mystery. Perhaps that will be enough to keep Diaz de Costa happy. Ramani, I, um... 
You think it's funny, don't you? Oh, come on, Sarge. I was just letting off a bit of steam. At my expense. That phone call really frightened me, and worse still, it frightened those I care about. You know, and, and now I'm worried that there is somebody out there who wants to hurt me and my family. Sarge, I'm really sorry. And I thought that people at work would understand, but clearly, I was stupid, wasn't I? Sarge? No, no, just forget it. Forget Sarge, it. I'm sorry. S Sarge! just come off the phone with Laura. She's been asking around about that guy we saw with Marshall. And? His name's Adi Mateen. Moved to the coal lane a few months ago. Been hanging out with street dealers. Is he dealing? Well, if he is, no one's saying anything. We should speak to CID anyway. And tell them what? That we saw Mateen speaking to Andy Marshall. If they suspect Marshall's a dealer, they'll want to know. Now, let's leave it until we've learned a bit more about Adi Mateen. What's that going to prove? It'll prove to CID I'm not the idiot that they think I am. Oh, come on, Lance, they don't think that. Yes, they do. I've had nothing but bad vibes since I messed up Gary's Zobo the other day. Our job is to pass on drugs intelligence, regardless of how much detail we have. Surely it should be left up to the individual officer to decide what's worth passing on to CID and what isn't. I'm serious, Lance. If you won't tell them, then I will. OK. OK, I'll call it in as soon as we're done here. It's about time you lot turned up. When can I go home? Not for a while yet. The nurse wants to keep you in a bit longer for observation. So while we're waiting, why don't we see what else you can remember about the attack? I've already told you everything I know. You're sure nothing was taken during the assault? Your watch, your wallet, anything like that? I told you before, no. And you didn't recognise who did it? It's getting us nowhere. All right, Mr. Greenwood. Do you have a next of kin we can inform of your whereabouts? I live with my daughter, Lisa, but she's not well. I don't want to bother done necessarily. She's probably already worried about where you are. We'll just pop round and let her know. For crying out loud, I just said I didn't want to bother it. Please. Where have you... Lisa Greenwood? Yes? Is your father larger, Greenwood? Dad's all right, isn't he? Uh, he was the victim of an assault this morning, but he's fine. He's in St. Hughes. Can we come in? Thanks. How long have you lived here, Lisa? Four years. Since Mum died. Uh, Dad had to sell our old house to pay for her cancer care, so the council gave us this place. You okay? Your father said you're ill. Oh, yeah, it's just, just a flu. I can't seem to shake it. We're trying to get a better picture of this morning's incident. You see, we're struggling to find a motive for the attack. Your father wasn't robbed, he was just assaulted. The assailant took nothing from him. Can you think of any reason why someone would want to hurt your father? M maybe someone with a grudge? No. The attacker described as a dark-skinned man driving a large, dark car. Mean anything to you? No. Sorry. Uh, to be honest, that could be half of this estate. OK, well, if you or your father can give us any more information, you can call us on this number. The hospital's going to keep your father in for a couple more hours for observation, and then he'll be sent home. A couple of hours? Yeah. We'll see ourselves out. Thanks. Cold turkey. That's why her father didn't want to speak into her. He knew he'd figure off a junkie. All this has to be connected somehow. You think her father being assaulted has something to do with Lisa's drug habit? Maybe Greenwood was trying to tell a dealer to stay away from his daughter. And what? They hand out a beating for punishment? <sighs> it's only the sharks one day are going to get bitten. There's one way to find out for sure if we're right. Hang around and see what Lisa does next. Hey, I'm Roger. You okay? Ooh. Don't take it to all. You know what he's like. He didn't mean anything. I know what Roger's like. I can handle him. About this phone call, wasn't it? Yep. Well, look, you know, seeing as Roger's not that keen on the case, why don't I go and see the super, see if he'll end it over to me? Uh, Roger's been assigned to it, Terry. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Okay. 
Oh, if you need anything, give me a shout. Sarge, can I have a word? See you later. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't realize how strongly you felt about the call. Well, I do. Well, I know that now. But I really didn't mean to cause any offense. Well, you know what I'm like. My mouth opens before my brain's had a chance to engage. Anyway, I'm onto it now. I'm going to ask at the front office to see if anyone's made a formal complaint against you. In the meantime, I want you to think of anyone you might have had a falling out with lately. Maybe someone on a recent case, okay? Don't worry. I promise I'll do my best to find who did this. So he does business with his ex, spends time with his kids, and he's back on the streets dealing before ten. Efficient. I think Marshall's using as well. Nah, two together for that. If he was on crack or heroin, he wouldn't be able to operate at this level. Unlike our friend there. And we're off to the next one. Didn't take her long. Well, she's not going to see her father, since Hughes is in the opposite direction. Now, if I was a betting man, Tenon says she's setting up a meet of her dealer. Come on. Well, it was a fiasco. I just want to forget about it. What do you mean, just forget about it? You were so frustrated when Kennedy walked yesterday. Yeah, because we had nothing on him. Listen, I want Kennedy behind bars more than anyone. But that'll only happen when he commits a crime. Well, he's a rapist and he's going to do it again soon, isn't he? You think I don't know that? What can I do, Terry? The superintendent has taken away my surveillance. Kennedy's behaving like a model citizen and he walked free from the trial. I have to move on. Have any complaints been lodged against me? No, no such luck. What about you? Did he come up with any names? Um... A couple. There was this domestic uh, violence case which done quite nicely, and the husband, Neil McQueen, threatened me. Well, sounds like a possible. Yeah, and uh, then there was this confrontation yesterday. Well, who with? Nikki Houghton. She was the member of a right-wing women's group, and I put her away a few years ago because she attacked an Asian girl. And she was working at the supermarket that I go to, and we recognised each other, and... Uh, she had a go. In what way? No, oh, just normal racist nonsense, really. Name calling and such. Did she make any threats? No, no. But she kept saying it was my fault she went to prison. And anyway, um, what I don't understand is how either of these people would know to ring Brian or to get his number. But who knew you and Brian were together? Oh, well, friends, family. No, not them. Who else? Most of the people I work with knew. Well, which of them would have his number? Nobody. Unless they had access to my diary. All right, which is where? Oh, um, my bag, or uh, we should keep it here. Oh. What is it? The diary's missing. She's heading towards Bevan House. Come on. You sure this is right? I know this estate. Marshall should be along any minute. Bingo. There she is. What does the ID say about him? Lance. What 
kills done. Come on. Hans. Stop, please. I... Keep hold of him, Hans. There's a surgeon now. You won't find him. Stay still. Look, I'm telling you, you won't find anything. Oh, don't tell me. She got away. Oh, you idiots. You've done it again. This is our suspect. So what? You want us to go down as a uniform arrest and not a CID one? You don't get it, do you? Get him out of the way. Come on, mate. This wasn't supposed to be an arrest. Marshall was under surveillance. Why didn't you warn us off then when Lance handed in the intelligence? What intelligence? There was an incident this morning involving Marshall and this new guy on the estate, Eddie Matin. There was an argument, sounded like the subject was dealing and whose patch it was. This just gets better. I was going to be... Save it for back at the station, Hans, because if you say any more now, I swear I'm going to lose it. There's nothing on it. We'll take him back for a strip search anyway. And since this was uniforms cock up, we'll give them the pleasure of doing it. Come on. <gasps> Roger, has the diary turned up? No, I've asked around, no one's seen it. Well, I've looked at her and I've looked in the car, it's not there. So we'll have to assume that someone's taken it and got Brian's number. Where did you last see it? No, I had it in my drawer yesterday because I needed it to look up an old friend's address. Well, well, that narrows it down to people who had access to our office. You didn't take it home in your bag? I don't know. Um... No, no, no. Yes, I did. I did. I had it in my bag when I went to the supermarket. That's it. It was before I realised it was Nicky Houghton packing my bag, so I left it at the end of the till like I normally do. So... Yeah, she could have taken it. Right. I'll get on to it. Great. Thank you. Oh, hi, Ramini. Margaret, hello. I I'm sorry to hear about that phone call yesterday. What a horrible thing to happen. How do you know? Everyone in the station's talking about it. I, I wasn't gossiping. No. I was just concerned with how you're coping and everything. Well, I I'm fine. Thank you. As I was saying, the reason the original British Model Railway HO didn't work was because it was nigh on impossible to reproduce the exact scale wheel treads. Sierra One from Sierra Oscar. Thank God for that. Yeah, go ahead, Sierra Oscar. Disturbance at 32 Hasker Lane. That's Adam Kennedy's place. Uh, yeah, Sierra Oscar from Sierra One, all received. Have you got any idea who might be involved, over? Not as yet. Okay, Shaz, dealing. Someone's decided to make that job easier. Kennedy! The police! Mr. Kennedy! Did it to him has long gone. An on the way. And there's definitely no one else there, no? No. Reggie's talking to the neighbours now. All right. Thanks, mate. What were you saying earlier about needing a way in? If Kennedy's been assaulted, then his house is a crime scene, which means we don't need a warrant to search the place. Absolutely. So what are we waiting for? I told you I was clean. Well, you're going to let me go now. You promised me you'd speak to CID, and you didn't. It's bad enough to think we're all wooden tops without you confirming the fact. OK, Mr Marshall, you're free to go. DC Bess, will you show Mr Marshall out? I'd like to work with PC's pal on the... I know what you're going to say. What? That as uniformed officers, you were supposed to pass on all drugs intelligence to us at CID? That if you had informed us about Marshall, like you were supposed to, you would have known he was under surveillance. That by arresting him and blowing our cover, you made it impossible for us to do our job. And in the process, screwed up a major part of Sunil's biggest ever drugs initiative. Unbelievable! Too late, ladies. He's got a vigilante attack. How is he? Oh, he'll live. A few cuts and bruises, possibly a couple of broken ribs. Want to wait the hospital now, see if he can give us a description of his attacker. Well, unless you'd like to go. 
I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. Now you go ahead. We'll wait for the crime scene examiners. All right, Mr. Spencer, if you could just put the tapes to one side, I'll come down and pick them up. I finally got hold of the manager of the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Now, that little fracker he had yesterday he nearly cost Nicky Houghton a job. Did I hear you say that there was CCTV coverage of the till area? Yes, yeah, so if Nicky Houghton did lift your diary, we'll have video footage to prove it. Oh, thanks, Roger. That's great. So no problem. <laughs> Not disturbing anything, am I? No, no, no. It's just that um, I was cleaning the briefing room and I came across this. And I thought you might be needing it. <sighs> I'm afraid I had to look inside because I needed to see who it belonged to. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Right. Thanks, Maggie. I said, be getting on. Yeah, sorry. Thank you, Maggie. I swear, I looked in the briefing room. So there's no logical way Nicky Houghton could have known to ring Brian York let alone find his number. Which means I have wasted half my day investigating a total non-event. I'm sorry, I'm not... I don't know what to say, except the call must have been made from within the station. Oh, please, Ramani. It's a stupid hoax call. Will you just let it drop? Mr. Kennedy, can you give us a description of your attacker? Are you the ones who've been watching my house? You tell me. Surveillance has been stopped. Typical. You spend weeks harassing an innocent man, but when a real criminal turns up, you're nowhere to be found. Ah. You think I deserve this, don't you? I was beaten like this when I was on remand. Now I'm out. It's the same. I wasn't found guilty of raping those women. I'm still being made to suffer. I'm the victim in all this, you know. Mr. Kennedy, uh, please. Did you get a look at your attack? No, I was attacked from behind. Were you in your house? I was just opening the front door when I heard footsteps behind me. Before I could turn around to look, I felt a sharp pain on the back of my head. I fell forward. He followed me into the house, started punching. I see. Are there any witnesses to this? Friends, neighbours? No one came to help me, if that's what you mean. Look, where's Samantha? D.S. Nixon's busy. Yeah, will you tell her I wanted to take my statement? I said she's busy. I've had about enough of you and your attitude. I want Samantha. She's the only one I can talk to. Rich. I'm going to put a call into Sam, see how she wants to play this. Keep an eye on him, Rich. They've given the place a right guy now, haven't they? No, it's more than that. You look at it. You can see that the... The order has been sucked out. He's such a control freak, Kennedy, and that's what his crimes are all about. And that spills over into other areas of his life, you know? Like his house, his clothes, everything neat, everything in its place. But now... Chaos. His mind's in chaos. He did this. He trashed this room. Hey, Tony. Kennedy's playing up. Says he wants to speak to you. Tell him I'm busy. Yeah, I know, Sarge, but I think there's a chance you might be able to get more out of him than me and Rich. I'm not playing Kennedy's mind games. You tell him I've been called back to the station to see the DCI. And if he won't play ball, tell him the suspect will probably get away with it. Yeah, we'll do. This ought to be fun. Sarge? What is it? Not sure. Looks like some sort of oil. Yeah. Listen, we'll leave forensics to finish up here. I need you to do a house-to-house, -house, see if anyone saw anything. Where are you going? 
I'm going to go to the hospital and have a word with Kennedy. Well, that's wise. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm sick of him expecting me to be at his beck and call. So the diary was here all along? Yes, sir. We're back to square one. Well, I didn't think it would be an easy task. You can go back to your normal duties, but if you can't keep your ear to the ground, I'd appreciate it. It's important that we show Diaz to Costa that her concerns are taken seriously. Yes, of course, sir. Sam, I knew you'd come. This has to stop. What? These mind games. Turning up at the station, demanding to see me. You're all I've got, Sam. You're the only one who understands me. No, I'm not. I don't get you. I don't understand you. It's part of my job to analyse you so that I can lock you up. Be honest with yourself, Sam. You've taken more than a professional interest in my case. I intrigue you. You are nothing to me. You're just another name on a crime docket. I solve the crime and I move on to the next guy like you. You're not as unique as you think you are. No, that's not true. Once you're locked up, you're just another statistic to me. And this stupid obsession, it stops here and now. Do you understand? Oh, come on. Give me an excuse. Are you all right? Everything's fine. We're finished here. We're not finished till I say we're finished. I spoke with Reg and Tony. I've got a description of Kennedy's attacker. All right. White, late 40s, beard, possibly wearing blue ovals. Yeah, that tallies with a description I got from a neighbour about some guy hanging around outside Kennedy's house. He was in a green Ford Mondeo. Index? It's partial. It's R something 91 UH something. Good. Let's take a look. Good. Oh, if you've come to report drug intelligence, you're about three hours too late. Give me a break, Gary, will ya? Wasn't so long ago you were working the estates. Look, I know I made a mistake. It wasn't intentional. I should have come to you earlier. I just wanted to be sure of my facts before shooting my mouth off. That's it? No, we just heard from Laura. She thinks she's found the car involved in an assault on the coal lane this morning. The car belongs to Andy Marshall. Mm. About fill me in on the way. Oh, good. Terry? I just spoke to forensics about that oily residue we found at Kennedy's place. Oh, yeah? It's a mixture of trade and commercial motor oil. Right. Well, Dean's run a few variations on that part index for me. There were four hits in the local area, and two of those were Green Mondeos. Any addresses on that? Yep, they're all here. Should we go? OK. That's Marshall's car, all right? And it matches the boy's description. Are you sure this is the one? Yeah, the eyewitness said this all Jesus. Or St. Raphael, Archangel, to be precise. One of the patient saints of nurses. Nurses? And obviously drug dealers as well. 661 from Sierra Oscar. If Marshall did assault Greenwood, it would explain why we couldn't get any witness statements. They were too scared to speak. What about Nigel Greenwood? Will he make a statement against Marshall? Not unless we offer him something in exchange. Anything in mind? See what we can do about getting rehab for his daughter. Ah, oh, might be too late. Kind of just had an ambulance call from Nigel Greenwood. Looks like Lisa's overdosed. Further. That's my daughter. Mr. Greenwood, it's going to be okay. Is it? I'm waiting to see whether my daughter's going to live or die. I'm wondering which is going to be worse. I'll get some water. It's not the first time she's ID'd. It's happened twice before. I didn't think she'd survive the last one. How long has Lisa been taking drugs? The so-called soft stuff. Five, six years. Before the council moved us onto the coal lane, but... then... 
The temptation to move on to the harder drugs was even greater. It was all around her. Is that why you started buying for her? It was the only way I could keep her off the streets. I've tried to get her into an NHS rehab program a dozen times. So I resorted to doing it for myself. I've been trying to wean her off it by giving her less and less each time. And the man who assaulted you this morning was Andy Marshall? He said the beating was a warning. Mr Greenwood, I put in a call to Sun Hill's drug referral worker. I can't make any promises, but there's a good chance we can get Lisa into a rehab program once she gets out of here. If she gets out of here? It's a long-term course of treatment with an aftercare network and support program. In exchange for what? Mr. Greenwood, I've got some good news for you. She's going to be all right. <laughs> Come and sit down. How's the daughter? The crash team are working on her now. <laughs> She's going to be OK. Mr. Greenwood. <laughs> I'm DC Masters. Hello. <laughs> Has PC Powell told you how we can help you? I'm scared. Of Andy Marshall or of Lisa overdosing again? Your daughter almost died today because of Andy Marshall. Help us get him off the streets, please. Come back for another guy, have you? Andy Marshall, I'm arresting you for actual bodily harm against Mr. Nigel Greenwood. You're having a laugh? That old girl will never make a statement against me. Are you too late, mate, because he already has. What? You didn't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when question something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. That's the last car on the list. Did the owner say how long it had been in here? Three days. Having a new clutch fitted. What did Kennedy say? White male, 40s, bearded, blue overalls. Mm, it's mainly oil. Can I help? DS Nixon, Sun Hill. DC Perkins. Uh, you own this place, do you, Mr. Francis? Billy Francis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where were you at 10 o'clock this morning, Billy? Yeah, where I always am. Anyone verify that, can they? I don't think so. Well, that's a pity. There's a man fitting your description was seen assaulting a Mr. Alan Kennedy. Do you know him? What happened to your hands, Billy? Uh, I got into a fight with someone in the pub. When was that? A couple of nights ago. What pub was that, Billy? The, uh, the, the Tally Arms. Landlord verify that, will he? No. No, it happened outside uh, once the pub was closed. Anyone with you at the time? You got any phone, Billy? No. We can check. No! Come on, Billy, we know it was you. You were seen sitting outside Kennedy's house all morning. It's Green Mondeo here. What'd you do? Borrow it for the day? You got any objections to an ID parade, Billy? Yes! I, I mean, no. Just tell us why you did it, Billy. Because he deserved it, that's why. He deserved it because of what he did to Brenda. I just never thought he'd have the nerve to report it. Brenda. Brenda Kelman. Yeah, we're close. But not in the way you think. We knew each other back in the 80s in Glasgow. Did she put you up to this? No, you lot did by letting him walk. You can't take the law into your own hands, Billy. What are you? Kennedy's protector. Kennedy's case collapsed in court. Yeah, and we both know whose fault that was, don't we? And we both know that he raped Brenda and six other women. Billy Francis, I'm arresting you for assault on Alan Kennedy. This isn't right. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. That man is a monster and he's out there walking the streets. Somebody had to sort him out after you lot screwed everything up. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Put him in the car, please. Oh. He can rape again any time he likes and you lot are powerless to stop him. Remember that when Kennedy rapes again. It'll be your fault because you didn't put him away when you had the chance. Could you just get him in the car? Why did you assault Mr. Greenwood? I didn't. You know we have a statement from the victim. So why don't you save us a lot of time and tell us why you did it. Okay, I'll tell you. You assaulted Mr. Greenwood because he owed you money for drugs. And who said anything about drugs? We did. This young woman's in hospital because of the heroin you sold her. 
No, 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 no. The heroin you say I sold her. Now, Lisa Greenwood could have got it from anywhere. Simple supply and demand. Now, all your clients by name, dear. I went out with her a few times, that's all. Is that how you increase your client base, Andy? Go out with a girl, get her hooked, move on to the next one. That's how you justify what you do, is it? Don't get all more on me. You don't know nothing about me. So why'd you do it then, Marshall? Make yourself a big fish in a small pond? Make yourself feel like a man, is that it? Have you got any idea of how it works out there? Drug dealing's just another job. Where I'm from, there's dealers everywhere. And you know why they do it? The same reason as you do what you do. To earn a living. To feed their families. To provide for their kids. If you got something on me, charge me. Otherwise, I'd like to go, please. This place is giving me a headache. I think Brenda put Billy up to this. Possibly. Oh, what do you want? How are you? <laughs> Can we come in? Uh, do I have a choice? Make it quick. Alan Kennedy was attacked this morning. What, am I supposed to say I'm sorry to hear that? A man called Billy Francis has confessed to the assault. Billy? You know him, do you? Brenda? I know I'm daft sod. What would he go and do something stupid like that for? He claims he did it for you. Well, thanks for the morality lecture, guys. I'll see you around. Yeah, you can be sure of it. Has he been charged with assault? Bail to appear in court within four days' time. What about the supply of drugs charge? Not enough evidence. We had to let him go. Well, let's hope the assault charge is enough to put him inside. At least then we'll have one less dealer to worry about. What's your relationship with Billy Francis? Well, he's not a punter, if that's what you mean. I've given all that up now. Mainly thanks to him. He helped me get the deposit on this place. He's a friend. A good one. So did you put him up to the assault? No, but if I'd thought of it, I would have. You know Billy's going to go to prison for this, don't you? What? <laughs> British justice. You can't beat it, eh? Unless you're Alan Kennedy, eh, D.S. Nixon? Billy broke the law, Brenda. No. Billy confessed to breaking the law. That was his mistake. Admit nothing and hope the system screws up enough for you to walk away scot-free. Billy should have learned that from Kennedy, if nothing else. That isn't fair, Brenda. Don't you know Don't talk to me about fear. Fair is Alan Kennedy being banged away for life. Fair is me being able to walk through that door without fear of being raped again. Just for the record, we did everything we could have done. You know, I put all this behind me before you lot came along. You were the one that came to me, remember? Promising me you could put Kennedy away. Making me relive every second of what he did to me. You promised me you put my way. <laughs> I trusted you. Brenda, I'm... Look, just get out and leave me alone. Go on, get out and leave me alone. Penny for them. Earth calling lambs, come in, please. I was thinking about the lengths fathers go to for their children. What, you mean Nigel Greenwood and Lisa? Andy Marshall and his kids. Wait! Come on. Marshall. About what Brenda said to you earlier. Don't take it to her. She was upset. I think you were the easiest person to take it out on. Her and Billy were right, though. Those women trusted me to get Kennedy. I let them down. You and I both know you did your best to put him away. I don't know, Terry. 
This job just gets to me some days, you know. Come on. We can't put off telling Kennedy about Buddy Francis any longer. We're playing right into Kennedy's hands, you know. He's loving all this attention. Kennedy? 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 Hold on, Terry. Brenda? Brenda, is that you? Are you all right? Hello, Sam. Kennedy. I told you it wasn't finished. What have you done with her? You shouldn't have spoken to me like that, Sam. Where's Brenda? He followed us. I led him right to Brenda's front door. Next time on The Bill. Okay? Hi, Harm! Get away from her! There's a rapist out there and he's taking an interest in one of my female officers. Is there a problem? Oh, Ramini was just, um, going through my bag. You're Alan Kennedy, the serial rapist. <laughs>